Whether you're just starting out miniature painting or you've been doing it a while, I've got some great tips and tricks for you this week on Tabletop Witchcraft. Hey there, and welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. This week, we're diving into a video that I've been wanting to get into for quite some time now. I've got a lot of questions on the channel regarding this topic, and that's miniature painting. It's something that I find very relaxing. I really enjoy doing it. I've got a ton of miniatures to paint, so there's no shortage there. So if you enjoy this video, leave a comment below and let me know. I'd like to make more of these in the future. Now, for those of you that have been following my channel, I have an epic video coming out, gigantic, coming out, I'm super excited, next week. And somebody in my community tab actually figured out what I was making. I posed a question there and someone figured it out. So after the video, head on over there too, check it out, and maybe you can figure out what I'm actually making for next week's video. So with that, let's go grab some minis and let's get painting. Okay, so our first technique here is going to be a glaze. It's basically just a very watered down paint, about a six to one water to paint ratio is what I like to do. And this is just to give you an idea of actually how thin that paint is gonna be when we're applying it. But before we apply that, we first have to do our base coat. And for a base coat, I like to do a three to one water to paint ratio. And a good rule of thumb also is you wanna apply at least three coats of paint for your base coat before you start um, a glaze or highlights or any other um, techniques. So the base coat, I used this Vallejo black red paint. And for the glaze, we're gonna use a straight up red. Now it's gonna look like I'm pretty much just brushing water onto the model. Again, it's a very thin paint here, thin down paint. And it's probably gonna take me close to 10 plus uh, layers here before the highlights start to show, the blend starts to show. But one of the nice things about that is if I screw up a brush stroke, you're really not gonna notice it. So it's a very forgiving method as long as you have the paint thinned down properly. Now, when you take a brush stroke, not that you're gonna try and leave puddles of paint, and you shouldn't have that much paint on your brush to begin with, but you're gonna have a little bit of buildup of paint at the end of each brush stroke. So we always go from our darkest to our lightest spot. You can see most of my brush strokes are all going in the same direction, depositing all the pigment at the spot that I want to be the brightest. Now I'm just adding a little bit of black paint to that black red Vallejo. And I'm basically doing a glaze in the reverse direction, darkening up some of those areas and correcting some of the areas that I wanted dark that I might have touched with the straight up red color earlier. So you can see this is a really relaxing, kind of a fun, low stress way of uh, painting these miniatures. Now I wanna do a final highlight. I'm gonna use this Carmine Red and I'm going to paint that over pretty much just the brightest areas of our glaze. And you'll notice that I'm also, like before, brushing uh, those strokes in the same direction, having my brush stroke end where I want the cape to be the lightest. All right, on this miniature, we're gonna work on a technique that most everybody's familiar with, but I didn't wanna leave it out, and that is dry brushing. 
So I base coated the plume on the helmet here in a ultramarine color. And I'm using this kind of like a sky blue. It didn't have a name on it. It was a sample from Reaper. But I'm using that to dry brush the plume. Now I have probably close to 90, 95% of the paint off of this brush. I'm just brushing very lightly across the grain of, uh, of the plume. It's a really good technique when you're working with any type of chain mail, fur, stuff like that. You'll notice the tiger that I did later on in the video. That wouldn't be a great uh, use for this because there really isn't much um, texture on that fur. Now I'm looking to get a little bit more definition, a little bit more contrast actually on the plume. So I'm just taking some Vallejo ink blue and I'm being very careful as to where I'm placing it, making sure just to get it on the plume. If you wanted to, you could water that down a little bit and actually place a little bit on the helmet and it would sort of act like the reflection from that uh, blue plume onto the helmet. Then we go back and do a final dry brush and we'll have some really good contrast once we're done. All right, this is gonna be really fun. This is my favorite technique for doing a skin tone. It's gonna be a combination of the glaze that we did earlier and a couple different coats of paint and a wash. So his skin already I painted in Bugman's Glow. These are uh, Games Workshop paints. So we'll base coat them in that. Then we're going to do a Cadian Flesh Tone over that to sort of highlight. Then we're gonna wash him in the Reichlin Flesh Shade and then a very watered down glaze again of the Cadian Flesh Tone over that. And you can vary the skin tone color simply by adding uh, some darker uh, brown color in there or some lighter colors to uh, lighten up the skin tone. So as you can see, it's a very light um, brush strokes. I'm not putting the paint on heavy, and I'm just hitting the highlights, the top of the knee, the top of the calf, again here, the bicep. You can see I'm doing the tricep on the back, um, the back as well, and just skipping all the areas where there is uh, any shade. Now you can take a picture of these miniatures after you Zenithal prime them. And that would be a really great reference. You know, check them out on your phone as you're painting or on your computer. And you can see it doesn't take much paint on the brush. I haven't gone back to my palette. I've loaded it up once and it's more than enough to go around this miniature three or four times uh, with my highlights. Now it's time for the Reichlin Flesh Shade Wash. We're gonna very carefully place this. We don't want it too thick. And you can see a little, another little trick that I like to mention. I like to use my glove as a little wet palette, or a palette, I guess, and just load that up with a little bit of wash, sometimes a little bit of paint, and then my hand doesn't have to travel as far. I know it doesn't seem like a big deal, but you know it saves a little time, and it's, uh, it's actually kind of a cool little trick. And when you place that wash, you know, you could puddle it up, I guess, a little bit more in the spots you want to be quite a bit darker. But again, you want to have a nice thin coat over most of the model. Now we can go back to our technique from earlier, the glaze. And again, this is probably close to that six to one water to paint ratio. And we're going to hit just the highest points. And you can see I'm really not even doing large brush strokes, almost kind of just dabbing it on very lightly on the highest points. All right, on this guy, I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, highlighting metallic objects. I'm not doing any um, non-metallic metal here. I'm just gonna use some metallic paints. Uh, 
you know, non-metallic metals could be a whole video all by itself. But basically, I like to use a darker metallic color. In this case, it's a lead belcher for the steel. And all I'm doing is taking a straight up silver to do the highlight. I'm using the edge of the brush to get the ridge line here on the sword, as well as the edges. And once all of the metallic pieces on this miniature are highlighted, you know, they're really all going to stand out. It's going to look really good once we're done. And after I had base coated all the metal on here, I did give it all a wash with Nolan oil. And now I'm highlighting it uh, with the silver. And for all of my bronze pieces in this miniature, the highlight uh, it was also washed in nulling oil, and then the highlight was that gold that you see there in the background. And another nice feature of having a glove is you can use that to test your paint before you apply it to the miniature. Alright, now we're going to use the tiger to do some eyes, work on our eyes here as well as learning how to thin the paint down properly for fine detail. So I like to use a flow aid and mix that with the paint and a very small brush with a very fine point uh, to do the eyes. And the same goes for all the fine line work when we work on his um, stripes on his back. The same can be um, said for you know doing details like tattoos or scars on miniatures as well. So we thin down the paint with the flow aid, and in this case, it's just a very small amount of flow aid. Uh, you just really have to practice with it until you find the right mix. But you can see how I can do the eyes. I can start doing the stripes here. I can do some detail around the mouth and the nose with the paint thinned down this way. And it doesn't glob up on the miniature, because if we went straight from the pot or from the bottle you would lose all that detail and it would be really hard to get this kind of detail uh, without using the flow aid and you want to be careful because too much flow aid and um, you're gonna have the exact opposite problem it's gonna almost act like a wash on these very small fine detailed portions the eye here I'm using a bronze flesh tone and I mixed that with a little bit of like a mint green because I wanted the eyes to have a little green effect. And we just want to make sure our hands are locked in. You can see I have my left hand resting on the table and my right hand is resting on top of uh, my hand holding the miniature. And that was just a little bit of green ink by Vallejo that's been watered down just a little bit to kind of accentuate the green in the eyes. Now, as I mentioned just a minute ago, the key here is being locked in nice and steady. And you need to be careful sometimes when you do the eyes. Some of these nicer brushes will have a guide hair. Honestly, I find that to be a little bit of a pain um, and it actually kind of gets in the way for me. So just be aware of that as well. And you want to make sure that whatever you're painting doesn't have chameleon eyes. So try and look the miniature straight on uh, when you're doing this, just to make sure that uh, everything's lining up properly. So you can see how smooth that paint was applied to my glove. Some nice straight strokes there. Uh, that's pretty much how you want it uh, to apply uh, fine detail. I like these stripes. Basically, you don't want to see the paint in a ridge or a glob um, on your miniature when you're painting, especially when you're going for this kind of detail. Now you can find, um, you know, if you have Reaper miniatures, if you're picking them up, you can find uh, some examples of, uh, of the miniatures that they sell already painted on their site. So it's a good reference, so you can check that out. As well as in the description below, I'll have all the items that I used in this video, 
Uh, Amazon links to all that, the brushes, the paint, the models, all that. So I like to use the Krylon matte finish here. You can see I'm just doing some light bursts. The can is about a foot to a foot and a half away from the model. And I'm really just letting the matte finish rest on the model. If you see it built up, if you see it wet and shiny, you're playing it way too heavy and way too close. It's a problem for miniatures, and it's definitely a problem if you're applying that to uh, foam terrain. Now a neat little trick, I always like to uh, write the date on the bottom of my miniatures. It just gives me a good reference and uh, I can track my progress that way. And then underneath in the base, I add a little tack, three quarter inch washer, and my mount is gonna be a one inch dowel stick with a magnet in it and it's strong enough to hold the minis when I paint. So there you have it, a bunch of tips and tricks that you can use during your next miniature painting session. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comments below because I have a ton of miniatures I need to paint and I would love to make a bunch more of these videos for you as well. I want to give a quick thank you to Reaper Miniatures for supplying all the miniatures in this video as well as a bunch of miniatures in next week's epic video for free. Thanks a lot Reaper, I appreciate that. Now, if you enjoy the content, please consider heading on over to Patreon and joining one of the tiers over there and support on sites like Patreon that really help this channel evolve and grow. One of the more popular tiers that's uh, been growing a lot recently is the Coven tier, where you can gain access to the private Facebook page, The Coven, and access not only to me, but to a bunch of great crafters out there. So, until next time, I'll see you around.